Welcome back. Seth Lakeman is often credited with making folk music cool, introducing it to a new younger audience. And for his latest album, Seth tells tales of Devon working lives. Yes, he's written, produced and mixed the whole album on his own, playing his favourite fiddle, guitar and banjo. Before we speak to Seth, morning Seth, how are you? Morning. Hello. You. Let's take a look at him performing at the BBC Folk Awards earlier this year. Seth joins us now. Very good morning to you. Good morning, yeah. um, you were just mentioning that you felt you should have brought your dog in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> how do you follow a cat? Yeah, that, probably, that, <laughs> wouldn't have, that would have been a great idea, to be honest, because the dog and the cat would have met each other on the way out. Yeah. And who knows? My spring well, spaniel would have been all over this, uh, this sofa, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, so we'll talk to you about the music rather than your pets then. Okay, that's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. You've, re you've done this latest album yeah. and recorded it in, an, in a unique place. I have, yeah. It's quite unusual, this record, Tales from the Barrel House. Um, uh, it really represents uh, the old artisans of industry. I've, I've taken blacksmiths and watchmakers and um, carpenters, stonemasons, all, all those sort of subjects and took them to a location called the Barrel House, mm. which is a, an old heritage centre uh, in Morwellum Quay on the Devon and Cornwall border. And um, I try to really capture the ambience of that room with one mic uh, and it worked incredibly well. It was, it was quite a, a challenge to, to record in a location like that, but also for one of the songs I, uh, I ventured down a mine to record. Did you really? Yeah, it's a you, song. you recorded down a mine? I did. Tin yeah. mine, coal mine? Got my hat on, went down the mine. What kind of mine? Uh, a tin of copper mine. Yeah. All right, so you get a tin mine, you get a little bit more room, don't you? Uh, a little bit more room, yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> right in the uh, 200 meters into the valley in this chamber at the bottom and yeah. It, we spent a couple of hours recording a song called More Than Money. Well, the acoustics is, is really the, the difficult thing to manage because presumably the barrel house, was it wooden floor, wooden walls? Wooden well, that floors? was, um, yeah, flagstone floor and then um, just these high rafters. Uh, but, yeah, within the, in the mine, it was actually really dead acoustically. It wasn't quite what I thought, but it worked very well for the song because it's all about miners and the conditions they worked in, so it actually represented it really well. And that song was? It's a song called More Than Money. Um, I think we can have song. a listen to it now. Oh, really? Brilliant. More than money can weigh you down. More than money can get you in the ground. You might be weakened by the paper's false reports. You can't read or write, you work all night, you fight for freedom's cause. The ways, the rhythm, drive the drilling, ride that rusty nail. So the video clearly not shot down the mine, but no, you, you the did trick, everything yeah. else. That, so you, how many instruments are there on that track? Uh, there's quite a few. I mean, there's harmonium, banjo, viola. Harmonium? Uh, how do you get a harmonium down a tin mine? Uh, <laughs> well, we didn't actually get the harmonium down there. We got all the others down there, <laughs> violas and fiddles, and uh, uh, we got the percussion sounds down mm. there. That was mm. important. Um, but yeah, that was obviously done in the barrel house. But as you can see, within the barrel house there, all the tools, it's like a museum in that place from 1890. And um, I, I, as, as the, the record evolved, I started to use all the different percussion within mm. that to represent those trades. So mm. I was using the anvil, um, I was using the bellows, uh, chains hanging from rafters I was using as the, uh, the tambourine, tool sharpener as a shaker. Um, so uh, unconventional percussion ideas so yeah it's quite a left field record mm. and yeah. you do most of that yourself don't you I mean the, the, you do have a backing band but so much of your performance on yeah. the album is about you yeah well this was a singular kind of concept I, I kept it quite focused just just to make um, that raw and rough sound that I needed um, I thought if I introduced other people it might smooth it over a bit so do you, is, do you, is part of you sort of thinking that you're really in sort of the, in the business of preservation in the sense that you're, mm, yeah. you're you know, bringing people's attention to places like disused barrel houses and tin mines. And yeah, it's important to pay homage to those people, I think. And um, 
some of those skills have been forgotten, I think. So uh, I spent a long time last year writing these stories. And, and then, yeah, it just evolved naturally finding that space, the barrel house. And the way it sounded in there was just, I was so, um, I mean, that's the star of the record, really, is the actual room itself, because one microphone and just capturing and all great. those sounds. It's, it's I mean, the great thing about folk, folk music as well is, is that you don't have to worry too much about amplification, electronics, etc. if you've got a microphone, some recording equipment, and yeah. your instrument, that's it. Exactly, that's all you need, really, yeah. And, you know, in, in the age of the way technology is, is growing, it's great to bring it right back to the basics and, and the roots of it all. Yeah. So um, I was really proud of this one, yeah. I really enjoyed doing it as well. It was good fun. One of your earlier, and in fact, Mercury-nominated albums, was yes. recorded in your kitchen. That was, yeah. That was back to basics again, I guess, yeah, yeah. Well, what kind of ambient sound did you get from your kitchen? What did you end up playing in there? Um, that was, uh, yeah, that was an interesting one, where uh, we were having to um, record pretty much everything um, around... It was right next to a school we were working, so it was, it was out of school hours, basically. We could only do it. Um, and I remember having to turn the fridge off every now and again. <laughs> All sorts of... Uh, we couldn't do it at dinner time, obviously, because it's a kitchen. Um, so uh, around meal times, yeah, it was um, that was an interesting one. You it, could just go into a recording studio, couldn't you? Presumably? I know we could just spend <laughs> the money and go to a convention <laughs> recording. Spend the money, yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah. much cheaper in the kitchen, I suppose. Well, we use, yeah. So it makes you wonder then: kitchens, tin mines, barrel, barrel houses. houses. What's next? What's next? Uh, I'm going to have to think of something to to beat a copper mine and a and a workshop. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. But you got to tour first. Yeah, we're well. touring in in autumn, and. Uh, we're actually going off to Australia um, next week for our first tour, so we're really excited about that as a band. Should be fun. Brilliant. Um, and hopefully getting something um, together as a CD with the BBC Concert Orchestra, because I was working with them uh, just a few weeks ago for uh, Music Nation. So you'll be inspired by Australia, won't you? You'll find a location out there that you could record your will, next yeah. album. Yeah. That'd be more costly though. <laughs> <laughs> you just well, stay you. out there. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Seth, yeah. lovely to see you. Thanks, Seth's guys. album tells from the Barrel House is out on Monday. Mm. You can see him as he mentioned on tour in October, all over the place.